Okay, what you're looking at is a VAG EGR cooler. Uh, it's an old one, there's various designs, uh, but this is one that somebody's just lent me. Um, the cooler is water cooled, so there's a water passes through this outside passage here and out through there. The EGR flow um, comes through the end here. You can't see, but actually there's um, one big hole which uh, I can push it all the way through. That's that's a bypass, so that's perfectly free. And then there's six smaller holes, which are the actual um, cooler itself. Um, and those are completely blocked with soot. You, you, you can't get anything through those. Um, so what we have is uh, this vacuum operated device here. So when a vacuum's pulled on there, this lever here can move in and out and that actually uh, rotates this this flap in here you probably can't see that very well the little flap in there there we go little flap which either directs the air through the cooler or um or through the bypass okay yeah so the, so the main concern was that um i think that when when you put the new uh, fix on the uh, on the vag diesels to reduce the NOx. It, um, or it reduces the NOx in the test, but it actually increases the, the soot or the carbon out of the engine by about threefold. And a lot of the problems that these things have is when the coolers block up with that soot. And that's the reason when I, uh, when I pushed this, uh, this rod through here, it got stuck because it's completely full of soot. So nothing can go through the cooler. And the only way through this is um is through the the bypass valve now uh i own a vag and i was a little bit concerned that um have it have the fix on now in the not too distant future my uh, my my cooler will block up just like this one's done so i was wondering if uh to, to if, if i could actually uh do something to the system to make sure that the air flowed through or the exhaust gas flowed through the bypass all the time which is a bigger hole rather than trying to go through the cooler um, and that way it would never get blocked up and I wouldn't suffer from um, any EGR cooler failures. Yeah, okay, so this is more or less, um, you know, what you were looking at here. Um, this is the um, engine exhaust around here. And if the, uh, this is, sorry, this is the EGR valve, the famous EGR valve. Um, and the air from the exhaust um, can come through here, through the little cooler thing that you looked at there, uh, up into the uh, EGR valve and then into the into the engine along with the uh, air from the outside world. In this bit of the circuit here, which is what we were looking at earlier, uh, that exhaust gas can either go um, through the cooler or it can come through a bypass circuit, which is inside the cooler, which was a bigger hole that I showed you. And that's come uh, controlled by this, um, this changeover valve here that instructs that little uh, lever thing there that little plunger to go in and out and that's what you're looking at um and my uh, my concern was that um yeah this uh, if if the cooler itself started to block um didn't matter how much air uh, this demanded uh it, it, it couldn't actually get through the cooler unless it went through the bypass and i guess that's when you'd end up with big troubles with with everything clogging up so what I was sort of thinking was, is there any way of fooling the system to make sure that the bypass is open the whole time um, and then the air can still go, go merely through the cooler, not be cooled as much as normal, but at least it would then really get through the EGR valve and into there. So um, I thought, well, how do I do that? And uh, the simplest way to find out, you know, what might happen would be to uh, disconnect the uh, electrical connections to this, uh, to this little device here, the uh, changeover valve and just see what happens and that's what you'll uh, you'll see in the next uh, in the next clips uh, basically um what you'll see is the um, maf that's mass air flow measurement so that's the amount of fresh air that comes into the engine and you'll also see the um, egr percentage and that's a percentage of gas exhaust gas which is mixed inside this EGR valve to go into the engine um, both with that electrical connector on there connected and the electrical connector disconnected 
uh, main intention was to see, well, does it actually change things very much? Now, I wouldn't recommend that you do this at home. Um, it's probably not legal to take out the car on the road with that uh, little bit disconnected. And to be honest, I don't really know what any long-term effects there might be on the engine. But um, it was interesting just to see. Let's have a look at um, what happened there. Uh, this is a graph from a similar sort of run. And basically it's showing three things. It's showing the um, amount of air that went through the EGR. And this is with the connector connected. Uh, the amount of air that goes through the mass air flow meter and the total amount of air that goes into the engine. So here we start off, start the engine, gradually increase the rev up to 3000 RPM and about a total of 50. Um, goes through the total engine um, which is made up of 30 of fresh air and about 20 of recirculating, recirculating gases. So let's just see what happens now when we um, unplug that connector. Okay this is what the graph looks like on another run but this time with the uh, connector the electrical connector disconnected and what it shows is we've got the um, the total mass airflow, which is the dotted line, and um, the mass, the mass airflow th that's coming into the engine, which is a blue line, uh, and they are exactly the same. Um, there is no exhaust gas here going through the engine. Uh, the red line here is the EGR flow. There is no air at all going through the EGR. So essentially, by unplugging that connector, what we've created ourselves is... Um, an EGR delete. Now what is shocking is that absolutely no warning lights are turned up on the vehicle. Um, when I drove the vehicle uh, I found actually that um, yeah the amount of soot that was collected in the uh, DPF uh, dropped drastically probably by a factor of three. Um, in fact you know probably uh, lower than the, um, the prefix um, amount uh, and again, absolutely no um, warnings that in doing so, uh, the knocks from the vehicle would also have gone up by a factor of three or four. So so here we've got a, a situation where um, the vehicle has, um, has suffered a, a, an emissions failure. It now is no way it would pass you know, any sort of test. It's issuing vast, vastly more knocks out. Um, but actually there is no warning at all to the user or the guy that's driving the vehicle. 
which is truly shocking um, because these vehicles are going to be on the road uh, for you know another 10 years time they won't be subject to um, in com in conformity tests in service conformity tests by by the government because uh, very shortly they'll all be over five years old uh, things can fail um, you know like this connector falling off or like the EGI cooler valve blocking up or whatever and you would get absolutely no indication that the vehicles were now giving out knocks many times what the legislation allowed and surely that is what uh, built-in test equipment on vehicle is meant to do it's meant to tell you when there is a failure uh, it's a it's a it's akin to um, you not knowing that uh, that your fire alarm wasn't working until you know actually the building burnt down and uh, and and this is you know the problem with the engine and you wouldn't know that it's um giving out excessive amount of knocks until it started affecting people's health some some years later so you know in my mind this is a major shortcoming and it also demonstrates as well how easy it is just to change things without anybody knowing um you know a couple of lines of software and wham all your emissions controls have gone out no um no illumination on the box and the dashboard at all so anyway so that's the uh, the end of my uh, my little demonstration as i say um best not to uh, to try it yourself just in case uh, something goes wrong but um i hope you found it informative Okay, um, I thought as well it was worth that while just having a quick look at the American version. Um, uh, they've got three three sorts of engines, but uh, basically they've come down to an EA189 engine, similar to our Euro 5, and an EA288 engine, similar to our Euro 6. But as regards the EGR valves, um, it's pretty much the same how they operate. Uh, on both, all the American vehicles uh, from VAG, they've got uh, two uh, EGR valves. They've got a low pressure EGR valve and a high pressure EGR valve. Whereas, um, of course, in the UK or EU, we only have the high pressure side. Now, what is really interesting to see about this is that on the high pressure side, similar to ours, there is no cooler. There's no high pressure EGR cooler in this circuit. So that means that that EGR cooler can never block. It's, it's like running it through the bypass. As, as I did in my previous exercise, um, the whole time. Um, similarly, on the low pressure side, uh, yeah, there is a, an EGR cooler. Look, here we are, there's the EGR cooler. Um, but it's actually situated after the DPF. So there is no soot that goes through that EGR cooler. So uh, fundamentally, you know, not only have they got a system which is, is, is more efficient as regards NOx than ours because it's got two EGRs, also it's a lot better from the perspective that the coolers will not block up, Similar because, simply because there is no high pressure cooler like we've got to block up, and the, uh, the low pressure cooler, the low pressure circuit, um, is, is, is processing filtered air. So, um, so there's no carbon in that either. So, uh, so that's that's very interesting. So, when when VAG say you know fundamentally there is differences between the UK vehicle and the American vehicle, well, there is. The American vehicles fundamentally are um, are a lot better um, at, 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 at ensuring that the NOx is, a, is is at a reasonable level than what ours are. And they're a lot better at making sure that the vehicles um, remain reliable because they're not trying to filter or cool, should I say, um, unfiltered air the whole time. Anyway, I thought you might just find that little thing interesting.